Good morning, good morning to all those watching Chef Malin. Today we're going to cook a little uh, little kaijio. And you can make kaijio however you want. You can add pork. Uh, Alex likes pork in his kaijio musap. Uh, Nicholas just likes, uh, or Nicholas likes uh, kaijio musap, which is a Thai omelet with pork. Uh, Alex just likes onion. And uh, I like onion with a little bit of garlic. So that's what I'm going to cook today. Hey, Mr. Mitch, what's happening? Uh, I'm going to wait a few minutes to let people come because once the thing is cooked, then it's cooked, okay? Um, but I just thought I'd do a little something different this morning because I cook a lot of omelets for myself, uh, sometimes for my kids. Uh, I don't always cook Thai-style omelets. I cook omelets like with cheese in them and and tomatoes and sausage and stuff like that. But Nicholas made a, made a point of telling me, well, you know, you're a good cook. I like your food, but the old lady down the street makes better kaijio than you do. She's got the experience. And I said, oh, really? I, I, I wanna challenge that. And he said, well, okay. So yesterday I cooked him, uh, I cooked him an omelet with uh, pork in it. And it turned out, hey, Carl, what's happening? I was wondering where you were. How you like Ho Chi Minh? Uh, but Nicholas, you know, uh, was a little surprised because I cooked up his uh, Kaijio Musap last night and he said, you know, it's actually better than the ladies down the street. It's different. First, he said, it's different. And I said, so whose is better? He said, ah, it's hard for me to say. Once he started eating it, then he said, yours is better. So I was like, okay. And, uh, you know, she's got, the, she's got the gas wok and she uses, uh, uh, she cooks it just like any other Thai would that's a, a, a vendor, you know, cooking outside, cooking street food with this big, big wok and uh, a tank of gas, a tank of propane beneath it. But first thing I'm going to do is I got the garlic. I'm going to chop up some garlic. Uh, Yeah, traffic is pretty crazy there. Let me see if I can get this over. I don't have a lot of room because uh, my wife likes to use the table as her personal uh, repository. She keeps her stuff here. She's got a, a computer screen and uh, mail and cosmetics. So it, I've got half the table to myself, so I don't really have enough room. But let me see something here uh, if I can do this. All right, so there's the, there is my garlic and my onions. I'll just chop it and see if I can do this here. I've already taken the skin off. Uh, and I'm going to cut off the end here because it's got the little hard thing on the side there. And Good enough. Good enough for me. I don't think I need this second one, to be honest. Be stinking like garlic all day. See, here's the little, the little thing I like to cook. Uh, I like to take off. You know, my wife is not home. Uh, sometimes when my kids come home. And if I'm not out traveling or doing something, then I, I cook. And I didn't used to like to cook, but now I've grown to like it. Oops. And this stuff is, this is pretty simple. So, 
There's my garlic. And I'm going to put that in after I put the, the uh, onion in because it'll cook very quickly and I don't want to burn it. So there's the onion. So that's what's going to go into the uh, into the wok. Now, um, you don't need very much. You, basically, to cook a, a, a Thai omelet, all you need is the eggs, some fish sauce, which most Thai kitchens, they always have eggs and, and uh, uh, fish sauce and you need some, some oil. Now we could use the soybean oil, but we have some, I have some coconut cooking oil. I'm gonna use that instead. Supposedly it's better for you. Let's see here. Um, also, I got my eggs, which Got the egg. Three eggs. You can use two, but I like to use three. Unless you put a you put some some filler in there, other than say onion and garlic. For me, what I found is two is not enough to fill me up or my kids up. But a three egg omelet, that works. So first I'll, I'll whip it up a little bit here. Very, very easy to do this. The trick is not burning the omelet, especially when you're using an uh, electric wok. All right, now I always add in the fish sauce. There we go. And I just put a couple of squirts in there. Maybe a little bit more, there we go. All right. Mix that up. Make sure the eggs are nice and smooth. Boom. Excellent. All right. Now, how am I going to do this? Now I got to maneuver the camera, which is a little tricky here, like I said. Um, all right. Ties don't put MSG in their in their uh, omelets. They use they use fish sauce. So I don't know what you're talking about. At least not the ties that I go to. They don't use they don't use MSG. It's in the fish sauce is what has the salt and what provides the the salt. You broke your fast. Oh, well that's always nice. Okay, what are we doing here? All right, there's the there's the wok. All right, this wok has cooked many omelets and many other things. So next is the oil. All right, and we use a lot of oil here because the 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 omelet needs to be slightly covered.
Well, the, the, the yolk is a different color now because I put uh, fish sauce in it. So let me see if I can plug this in here without killing myself and burning the place down. You know, I'm a hack. I'll admit it. I'm a hack chef. But, um, you know, I do my best. Yeah, well, that, you know, what are you going to do? You don't want it, you don't have it. That's all. Don't add fish sauce. Add something else. I mean, you know, this is the norm. I'm doing it as Thais do it. And that's okay by me. All right. Turn this thing on here. Crank it up. I like to crank up the heat. Just let it sizzle for a little bit here. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, you could put in some soy sauce. You could put in uh, uh, oyster sauce. You could put in a, a host of other things. You put in whatever you want. Put in pink uh, Himalayan salt or Himalayan pink salt, whatever you call it. Very, very easy. And I just kind of let it, let the onion sit for a few seconds because it, ta it takes a little while for them to brown. You know? Let's see if I can get this down here. of the onion. <laughs> All right, so that's nice and hot. Now I'm going to put the I'm going to put the garlic in. A little. Now I'm going to turn the heat down because on the electric wok, it's very difficult to get a temperature that is the right temperature. I'll end up burning the garlic if I keep it at a high temperature. Now, the other thing is that Absolutely, uh, rice is eaten with kaijio. You eat rice, you put the kaijio on top of it, you, and you eat the rice with it. Uh, however, I'm on a no rice, no pasta uh, diet right now, and I'm not going to have rice. So, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, so now it looks like these are getting browned. Maybe just a couple of, maybe 30 seconds more. And then comes the, the hard part. <laughs> Cooking the omelet without burning it. So just let it sit here, maybe about 10 more seconds. Believe it or not, once in a while, I can put together a good, uh, I can cook a good meal. All right, check this out now. All right, 
So I just let it sit for a few for a few uh, seconds. I'm gonna stand up here. You see, the edges will start to bubble. I like to make sure that I let the oil go under the under the omelet so that it doesn't burn. And also to get the egg out. You see it's kind of puffy right now. ready to flip. Want to brown it a little bit more. All right, I think it's about ready. Boom. Not bad. I wouldn't call it perfect, but it's not bad. One thing I forgot. Oops. Let's turn this off. This bad boy is done. So now what I like to do is get, oops, get a napkin or a paper towel, rather. Just let this drip a little bit. Put it on the napkin. some of these onions out of there. Now in a perfect world, we'd have a, some steaming rice, some steaming, steaming white rice or whatever rice you like. And we'd uh, throw the egg right on top of it and the, the rice would complement it. But that's it, all right? So now I'm gonna get this thing out of the way. And I'm gonna let the, uh, let the oil drain from that. I put a lot of thought into this dish. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, it's gonna be very, very good. Now, I also have some uh, sriracha sauce. Gotta have sriracha sauce. And actually, I was out of sriracha sauce. Uh, we were, we have a bottle, but the bottle was basically empty, which is, you know, thanks to my kids. They'll use it all up. They'll use all the sriracha up and then Got something on my screen here. And then they won't tell anybody. Oh, it's all gone. I ate it all. It's all gone. Mm, yeah. A little piece of garlic. Mm. Ah, you can throw some cilantro on there. You can put some, some green onions. There's all kinds of things you can use with it. But this is a very simple way. Um, and this is the way that, like, Nicholas, he likes his, his omelet. This is actually uh, uh, Alex. He likes his omelets this way. So, 
you know, for me, it's like, if I don't feel like sending them out to get some food, I don't feel like cooking up a big meal, you know, the wife's not home, uh, you just throw a couple eggs in there and boom. I don't have any green onions. I do have some cilantro, which actually I'm gonna go get. Well prepared. Ew, nasty. Um, you know, I could chop this up. I should. Let me just. My cut. My cut. Uh, my kitchen is very narrow. The, 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 ca the counter is very narrow, so it doesn't make for a very good place to film, um, which is why I'm at my table. Ew. What was that? All right, so I'll just get a little bit of this. Uh... Chop it up. I need one of those really, really long, big cutting boards. I haven't got one yet, but we have a couple of them. But I like the long ones in a big, long knife. All right, done. Now, I'm gonna take this off. Let's see how this looks on a plate. Hopefully I won't break it. There we go. A little bit greasy. A little bit too much oil, but you know that's the thing. It's there's a fine line between using too shit too much oil and enough oil to. Uh, there's two ways to cook it basically. You can put just barely enough oil and hope that. It doesn't burn, which is a problem on this wok. Or you can use enough oil to just barely cover up the omelet, and then you don't have to worry about it. All right, let's see how this looks on top of the... Let's see if the presentation will be halfway decent. I love it. I love cilantro. I like cilantro and uh, holy basil. Let's see a little bit more here. All right. Let's check it out. There we go. Not bad. Now the key is that it tastes good. Is it gonna taste good? That is the question. Will it taste good? Where am I at here? All right. And I have a feeling it's gonna taste quite good. Oh yeah. A little bit crispy. Can't complain about that. And the cilantro is a nice, nice touch. Thank you, Fidelity, for recommending something. Mm. 
that's tasty. A little bit too much oil, but you know, I didn't want to burn it on camera. Oh, speaking of chili, here. We got the, uh, here we go. Forgot about that, the, uh, Sriracha. Forgot all about that. Um, Let's see, 15 eggs is 60 baht, so just under $2. 15 eggs for, yeah, about $1.95. Mm. And I'm constantly boiling eggs, making omelets, adding them to fried rice and stuff like that. Mm. Oh man, that's good. <laughs> Breakfast with Chef Mallon. Ah, bon appetit. Oh man, it's good. It really is good. The onions are a little bit crispy. The garlic is just slightly tinged with brown. We got plenty of... <coughs> mm. Plenty of cilantro and, and sriracha sauce. I didn't put... I, the fish sauce is not coming through. Let me taste a piece with nothing in it. Ah, <coughs> mm. oh, it's very good. I've almost wiped this thing out. Ah, it's so good, man. It's so good. The fish sauce is the key, though. Or a little soy sauce. So, you know, I don't... I can cook. I have other talents besides schlepping around with a, a camera and live streaming. I'm not sure if I made a video. I love zucchini. I think I made a video where I cooked uh, cashew chicken, which is one of my favorites. It's very good. Mm. Oh man, this is so good. <laughs> Fluffy. It's flavorful. Fluffy, flavorful, and filling. No. <laughs> it's just a little something that maybe I'll add. It. Food is always part of travel, you know. Food is always part of travel, so I figure, you know... I'll show some things that I like to cook when I'm home. And people can always relate to eating. You know, I think I did a fried rice video a while ago, but I like to do a, uh, what do you call it? Oh, no mushroom soup for me. 
I mean, I don't dislike it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to cook mushroom soup. Um, what was it that I wanted to cook? I think I cooked it already. I don't know. Uh, Pat Kapow. Pat, Pat, Pat Kapow guy or Pat Kapow moo or whatever. That's with the holy basil. Mmm. Man, I'm sorry to see this polished off. I was hungry. I ate it like six o'clock last night. And by nine, I was hungry. I said, no. Nope. I'm going to save it for breakfast. There we go. The last piece. Mmm. Wiped it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of toast, you know. Once in a while, what I do, what I will do is uh, sometimes I'll toast some bread. And I'll... Uh, a little uh, like ragu sauce or something on there, a little bit of cheese. Ragu sauce with like uh, sausage in it. Put a little cheese on top of it. Heat it up in the microwave after it's been toasted. Give it to the kids. I keep calling them kids. They're young men now. Oh, man, that was good. That was good, and you see, I cooked it, I prepared it, cooked it, and ate it in less than 30 minutes. Can't beat that. Maybe I'll cook some uh, cow pad or some pad kapow, or pad thai's a little tricky. You gotta get the noodles right, but I can. I did cook some pad siu. I think I did it on camera with Steve from Steve's Kitchen uh, quite some time ago, a couple years ago. See racha sauce. Mm. Ah, good stuff. So, what's next? What's next on the menu? Uh, yeah, I guess a little less sore. Um, you know, a little less. I mean, I, I guess what it is is I'm just getting old and I just feel it a little bit more. <laughs> but I've recuperated and I feel pretty good. Hips feel pretty good. Legs feel pretty good. And I felt pretty good. I feel pretty good that I didn't burn this omelet because sometimes what happens is if I'm cooking the omelet, especially if I'm trying to cook like a four or five egg omelet, and what I'll do is I'll split it between Alex and Nicholas. Um, I'll throw in like onion, garlic, sausage, or a little bit of bacon, usually sausage instead of bacon. Um, some tomato, whatever. I'll just throw some stuff in there and then when you try to you can't flip it because it's too big and uh, so I'll fold it in half and sometimes you fold it in half and if you're not careful it breaks and then it's all over the place and you got to kind of mold it to 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 work but um this one turned out okay I'm happy with it a little bit oily but no problem Yeah. The, the next step is to clean the kitchen, which, you know, 
I'm not really fond of that. It's my kid's job. They, they have the, the chore of cleaning the kitchen every day and taking out the garbage, um, feeding and watering the dog. You know, they have their chores. But for something like this, I'll do the dishes because I made a mess and I don't want to leave it all day sitting in the sink. Uh, maybe I can make some Italian food, Gennaro. <laughs> I won't be making any lasagna or something like that, but maybe I'll make some kind of a, a pasta with fresh sauce. All right, I'm ready to go here. Yeah, that was tasty. The iconic Thai omelet. So how much do eggs cost in the U.S. now? I'm kind of curious to know that. Say a dozen eggs or 15 eggs. Anybody? Mexican food's a good idea. A <coughs> dollar fifty a dozen. Wow. All right, so they're around the same price. Uh, Mexican food would be good, actually, but. Um, Usually, I, the only two Mexican foods I make are um, burritos and tacos. And, you know, it's not like I'm making, it's not like I'm making, uh, making everything from scratch. You know, I don't make the, ta the tacos from scratch. I don't make the tortillas from scratch. <clears throat> so, you know, I don't make pasta from scratch. I don't do that stuff. I don't usually have time, and I don't really know how, to be honest. Not that it's all that difficult. I'm sure I could learn, but... A dollar at Target. I can't imagine that they're top-grade eggs, and they're, they taste excellent. I mean, the eggs I get, they're right out of the chicken. I don't know what the chicken's eating. I have no idea. I have no idea where they're getting them from. I could find out. But um, they're right out of the chicken. Like, you know, we got the eggs yesterday. Um, so these are fairly fresh. I mean, they, could, they can't be more than a day old. And they taste good. That's the important thing. At the end of the day, does it taste good? You know? Pasta primavera. Oh. You know, the other thing is we don't have an oven, like a big oven. Um, so we, we have one of those, uh, what do you call it? You know, a little, uh, like it's a miniature oven. Noki, oh, oh. I buy Noki from the store. It's store-bought Noki, and it's, uh, it's something like, it's not cheap, man. It's like six bucks for one package, and one package is not enough for three people. It's enough for two people. Yeah, it's a toaster oven. 
But usually we get, if we're going to cook gnocchi, which I don't, especially now, um, there's no gnocchi because uh, I don't feel like eating it because it's too too heavy and I'm not on that. I don't want to, bruschetta is easy, yeah. I could whip up an Italian meal, a little Mexican meal. I could do that, yeah. I mean, you know. There's a, what's that dish? I had it at uh, Toby's with Chris. It's a, um, I forget how they cook it, but it's like, it's like the egg is underneath and it's one layer. It's like an omelet underneath and then on top is cheese and all this other stuff and they bake it and that's excellent and i don't know where carlos is but uh you know carlos sent some some uh some stuff it's rub it's uh different he sent different kinds of rub and you just get get yourself some chicken out some pork chop or whatever um put a little water put a little oil on it and then put the rub on there. Yeah, that's what it is, frittata. Forgot what it's called. Uh, and then I just throw the, I'll throw the chicken in the oven for like 18 minutes with the rub on it, and it, it comes out awesome. I know that my, my wife knows that something's good because she'll be like, she'll get the face. Like, you know, because she's always been a better cook than I was, a better chef or whatever, right? When it comes to uh, Western food, no, we were on par. But now I'm starting to become a better chef, and in many ways, I'm a better cook than she is. So she, <laughs> and sometimes my kids will, you know, they'll give out a rating for her food and then a rating for my food, and she'll be like, she'll get the face. She gets the face. She can't believe it. She thinks they're just siding with me because it's a men's club or something, you know. I'm like, no, taste mine. And she go, mm, I like mine better. <laughs> Frittata sounds really good. I need to look into that. That's a thing I could have for breakfast. I could cook that up for breakfast. I don't know how easy it would be to stream it, but. Next to be my, my cookbook. All right, so we got bruschetta, some pasta prim primavera, we got frittata. What about Thai food, though? Oh, I need coffee right now. <coughs> I've got the gimbal, which is, it's on a tripod, but uh, I didn't use it today because I didn't think I'd need it. Honestly, it's not like I'm going to be moving around now with a with the with the gimbal. I can I can pan. I can you know tilt. I can do all kinds of stuff. So I really I really need somebody that knows about filming to like do it so I can just concentrate on the cooking or whatever I'm doing. You know, which is why I thought you know Chuck would be. Uh, he would be a good assistant because he's ve he's very good at uh, making videos, at editing videos. But he's not as good, in my opinion, as shooting the way I like things to be shot. But, you know, it takes time to learn. He didn't know how to use a GoPro, <laughs> which I couldn't stop laughing about. I'm like, you haven't ever used a GoPro? No, I've never used one. How do I? I hate Tum Yum. Honestly, I don't. And it's, uh, it's T-O-M. But I don't like Tum Yum. Very seldom will I eat it. I really have to be in the mood for it. And, um, yeah, I'm not cooking that. But thanks for the suggestion. But if I'm going to cook it, I got to eat it, you know?
Is that the, uh, what's her name? The pie or whatever her name is? Because I watched one yesterday. I don't remember which one it was, though, but. Yeah, send me the link, though. I'd like to look at that. I think once in a while it's a good thing. You know, you throw in a, a little bit of, you know, a restaurant. Like I said, I was going to do the burger thing. Now I'm back. I'll probably do a burger, uh, you know, best of burgers uh, joints in Bangkok. <clears throat> no. Thank you very much. Thank you very much there, Mr. Mitch. I appreciate it. Uh, loving it. Thank you. We got to give Mr. Mitch a big shout out. All those people who are the Patreon patrons and who contribute to this channel financially, uh, you help me keep going. And I say that all the time. Um, oh, okay. But I do mean it. You know. Um, so, thank you. And thank you to all those who watch. And to all those, the five people who click thumbs down. Wow. I had a thumbs down. I had not even started the video and I had a thumbs down. So you know that's a hater. The other four people, hey, maybe they just don't like me or don't like the way I, I talk about cooking or they don't like what I'm doing. Whatever. No problem. You don't have to like me. I can't control that. So... I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't know. I was I was gonna I was gonna stream on Sunday. I just have to think of what I want to do. Uh, I'll be honest. You know, I've I've done just about every park in Bangkok. The top ten parks in Bangkok. I think there's only one I haven't done, and that's in Nantaburi, and which is quite a haul. Um, so for me to shoot at Nantaburi Park or whatever it's called. I gotta have a reason to go out there to take, I, there needs to be multiple reasons. I can't just go out there for, just to stream for two hours and show the park. It doesn't make sense. So I have to look into that a little bit more. And uh, you know, the little parks around my house, done them to death. Um, well, thank you. If you love them so much, consider becoming a Patreon patron. Thank you. If you can't, I understand, but, you know, I get a lot of that. I love your videos, man. I love your photos. Then buy a print. You know, what do you think helps drive me? Food. <laughs> Food helps drive me. Uh, will work for eggs. Oh, man. Oh, curry puffs are good. Uh, samosa. Those that I had in Bangladesh were excellent. Will work for curry puffs. Uh, I would ask this, though. Uh, thank you for the extra two thumbs down. I appreciate that. Keep clicking them, baby. Keep logging in and logging out of your multiple accounts and keep clicking them. I love that. Um, I will ask this, though. Sign up to my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. You'll see I made some changes to my Instagram, and there's going to be even more changes in the next couple of days, but it takes me time to, to go through the, the photographs and everything, and also Facebook. If you don't want to go on Facebook, I understand. I'm on there. I'm on Twitter. You know, I'm sure that helps in some ways. Click like. Click thumbs down if you don't, you know, if you don't want to click thumbs up, whatever. I'm already, I've already got eight thumbs down. 12 thumbs up and 8 thumbs down. Thank you. I want to put a video out. What the fuck has happened to the world? It really is a fucked up place, man. <laughs> I really believe that. The world, it seems to me, the world is slowly going down the shitter. <laughs> For as many wonderful things and beautiful things there are in the world. Oh. <laughs> the best American hot dog in Bangkok. Dairy Queen. 
Or what's that place, the one at Auntie M's? Is that what it is? Auntie M's? They put the bread on the outside of it, too. They'll do that, too. That, that one's pretty good. The Auntie M's, I think, is probably better. They got the pretzels. They'll put a pretzel or they'll put just some bread outside of the hot dog or they'll just give you the hot dog. Theirs are pretty good. I don't know of any, like, places that are just hot dog places like, like hamburger places. Yeah, Dairy Queen actually has some good hot dogs. They raised their prices up, which, you know, it, that irritated Nicholas. Uh, now he's eating more healthy. He's not, you know, into the chocolate as much as he was when he was, say, a couple of years ago. And uh, he used to go to Dairy Queen and get stuff for, like, 19 baht. And um, then it went up to, like, 29 baht. And he was like, oh, all right, whatever. And then it's, you know, uh, now I think their cheapest little ice cream is like 39 baht and he's like i don't understand they keep raising their prices up aren't they selling enough what's going on uh there's a few museums uh the some of the museums won't allow you to uh to shoot uh, photos or uh video inside of them uh but i'd have to look into that a little bit more that yeah that is something to do you know or maybe maybe take a little day trip outside of um Outside of Bangkok, go somewhere else. You know, not just like Kanchanaburi or whatever. I mean, how many times have I been to Kanchanaburi? <laughs> you know. But there are some places to go. Just have to, I just have to dig a little deeper, you know. That's how it works. Dig deep enough, I'll find something. I did see something the other day. I don't remember what it was. I'll have to, like, try to jog my memory, but... Um, you know, it was one of those things that, um, w surprised me a little bit because I was like, oh, I can't believe I haven't gone there. So I got to really think about it. I can look through my, uh, search history on my computer. I guess that's one way of looking at it. Let me see here. So the cooking portion of our show is over. Oh, you know what I did forget to do? Is to make my tea. Where's my, uh, one second. Okay, where am I? Yeah, I cooked already. Done. Cooked. Prepared, cooked, and eaten. And it was tasty. Now for a little tea. A little morning tea. Before I start my day. Whew. 
Ooh, it's 10 o'clock already. Time flies when you're having fun. They got just about everything here beyond Trinity. Dairy Queen, KFC, Texas Chicken, McDonald's. Of course, plenty of McDonald's. Uh, Taco Smell. Burger King. Carl's Jr. I think they have Carl's Jr. Yeah, this is English breakfast tea. Actually, this is PG Tips. Which, I drink PG Tips because um, one of the first trips that I took on my own, Hooters. <laughs> one of the first trips I took on my own was to, um, uh, to England. <laughs> and... That's what I had was PG tips and it was good. I liked it. And I was like, man, you know, I got to find this stuff. And fortunately here in Thailand, they do sell it. So and I've been weaning myself off the espresso. I don't drink as much espresso now as before. It's Friday here. And what? And so that means it's garbage day. <clears throat> no. Anyway. Hooters. I don't know. That was a long time ago, man. I don't even remember watching it for the first time. I mean, to be honest, uh, their food is all right, but it's it's way overpriced. I mean, you know, and it's not like, you know, it's not like I'm going there to ogle the, the women. I mean, you know, yeah, there's some good looking ones there. But um, if I went there, that's for you guys. That's not for me because all I would do is just go, you know, and it's not like the women there are stupid. They know they I mean, it's right there in Nana. So, you know. Uh, no, I don't actually. Lori, what's happening? Ooh, it's hot. Lori is almost to Bangkok. She's on her way. You missed my cooking, Lori. But I'm going to leave this video up or this uh, stream up. I'm going to leave it up. Because I think... Uh, it's important that I leave this one up. Even with all the thumbs down. You know, it's not like I burn the, burn the omelet or burned the onions and the garlic and the, the place was smoking and I couldn't eat my meal. That, that's not what happened. So, thumbs up for me. Thank you very much. I should get a shirt made that says, I'm a photographer and I cook pretty good. Ooh, spam balls. Oof. Billy loves spam. Speaking of Mr. Billy, he loves spam. I think he said he was going to cook me some spam when he came over here. He was going to make me a spam lover. And I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Um, yeah, it was a very simple omelet, Lori. Just... Uh, Three eggs, some onions, some garlic, some fish sauce, uh, a little cilantro. Cook it up. Put some sriracha on that bad boy, and it was tasty. Quite good. But I'm proud I didn't burn it, because, you know, once in a while I do. That one always gets eaten by me because I don't want to give it to my kids if I'm cooking for somebody. <laughs> I 
Exactly, General. That's like the worst. A melon baller to make spam ball. I don't know. I mean, I have a problem eating bad, bad hot dogs, like really bad hot dogs that they sell. I mean, they'll sell these packs of like 48 or something. To be like four dozen hot dogs, and it's like six dollars or five dollars or something. I got a real problem eating those because I start thinking about you know what's in them, and I just don't want to eat it. I'd rather buy less hot dogs or sausage made with a higher quality product, and they do have some decent uh, sausages here if you look around. They also have chorizo, which is great in an omelet. I love, I loves me some chorizo. <sighs> Lori doesn't like spam. How many days, Lori? What do you got, like three or four days before you leave? My beard is getting more white. It's gonna be all white soon. Oh man, chorizo is good. Good stuff. It's a little expensive here though. You get a little package and it's like six bucks or whatever and it's not very much. Three more days. All right. Did you see those shots I put up of that, the woman I told you about? I've got more of her, but I just thought, and three's enough. Her situation is uh, depressing. You know, which is why, like I say, sometimes I try to keep it a little bit superficial because I don't want to feel too much, you know. I'll make myself miserable. I'll make myself miserable over it, you know? Um, somebody posted a comment that said, at least, at least she's not alone. Well, yeah, that's great. You know, I guess. Can't take a shower, can't take a shit over a toilet, you know. It's, it's just, yeah, I don't want to get into it. It's... I do feel for her. And we will go back. I do want to go back. Um... Well, she, she said she gets uh, 300 to 500 baht a month, and that's not going to do much at all, you know. All right, Lori. See you soon. Beyond Trinity scared her away. <laughs> uh, I think I put it up on Instagram. I think I just put it up. Yeah, there's a woman next to the dog. Yeah, and it says, you don't know GG. At least she's not alone. I mean, I guess that's a positive spin on it, but...
I think what she has is uh, alopecia, which is where she loses her, uh, you know, where a person loses their hair. I think that's what she has. But she's got a bad leg. She's got, she's just, you know, she's in bad shape. You know, it's hard sometimes to uh, separate yourself from, you know, like the fact that there's nothing really that you can do aside from maybe taking some photos, showing it to people, recommending some things to her. And, you know, there's not a whole lot I can do for her, you know. And the government's, you know, they give her 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month. That's harsh, man. It's a harsh existence. Anyway, enough of the sadness. We want to be happy because we can. Women in Thailand makes you happy. Is that what makes you happy? You know, now that I'm older, I'll be honest. I think um, women make you happy temporarily, whether it's physically or emotionally or spiritually, whatever. It's a temporary thing. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, the woman with <laughs> with the bad leg and the, and the dog, yeah. But anyway, I do believe that. You, like I always say, you might come here for the women, but staying here for them is a mistake. You know, you might come here thinking, man, what a place. I'm going to have such a great time. But I don't think they'll keep you. They usually won't keep a person here. And if they do, um, it's not healthy. Ah, tea is good, man. I mean, wouldn't you say uh, Beyond Trinity? <laughs> Can't live for other people. Can't live for women. Two subjects. The first subject was about the woman with the bad leg and the two dogs and how she, uh, how she lives. Okay? The second subject was women in general. And even, you know, you can say, oh, make them live for you. Get the fuck out of here, man. You can do that to a stupid chick or a chick who has no uh, self-worth. But a chick who's uh, sharp and intelligent, um, they're not going to live for you, you know, unless they, unless they absolutely need to, they have nothing, you know, that, that's why a lot of guys end up with, with, uh, chicks who are bar girls, they just figure, hey, she's going to stay at home and do nothing, and she's going to do nothing but take care of me, and while that can work in the right circumstances, I think in most cases, it's not, uh, it's not, it doesn't. It's not healthy. It doesn't work. I think you got to worry about yourself, you know. You worry about yourself and, and, you know, like, if you're halfway decent looking, you're halfway clean, you got any game at all, you know, there's going to be women around. You'll have your chances. Especially in Thailand. I mean, come on. Ugh. You think I haven't been there a million times? Of 
course they'll live for you if you want to pay all the time and sometimes that's okay. I'm not saying that, that it's, it's wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you want a chick who's got half a brain, in the majority of cases, um, you're not going to find them when you're paying their way the whole way and you're like, okay, honey, I'm going to give you, you know, 20,000 baht a month, you know. Well, that's okay, but look at it long term. You want to do it long term? Good for you. Personally, that's not what I wanted. It gets boring after a while. Big deal. You know? You make them live for you. Ugh. Dude. Anybody who lives for somebody else. I live for her. It's complete bullshit. Their definition of love is not the same. Well, yeah, that's true. Now, the trick is to get the ones who they understand, you know, like, oh, it's true love. But they also understand, they, they mix that in with their culture. I think that that's what's, uh, what's best. Because then they get the best of both worlds as they see it. They don't get shit from the people around them, you know. And there's a saying here, I didn't make it up, so don't give me a hard time about it, but um, if you're going to marry somebody here or you're going to get involved, get involved with an orphan. You know. Exactly, Jeff. But, you know, he won't say it because he just wants to, you know, he's Mr. Uh, pay for Play, Mr. MGTOW, you know. Which is, there, there's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, it's not the only way. To think that, like, pay for play is the only way and you can't be happy being married or having a girlfriend or whatever, it's just, that's just complete nonsense. Just like me saying being married is the only way to be happy, it's bullshit. You know, depends on the person. Come to Patias, Scott. I've been here fucking 25 years. Seriously, how long have you been there? Please, and tell me the truth. I've been to Patia more times than I can count. I just haven't gone in a long time because I don't really have a reason. And honestly, I don't get much joy going out to the clubs because I don't usually drink. And it's not like I'm going to get drunk, pick up some chick, take her back, you know, uh, have my fun with her, whatever, and, uh, you know, get on my merry way. That's it, not, I just, I'm not in that lifestyle anymore. I don't want to be that way. Well, I understand. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't disagree with that. I don't know how old you are or how long you've been there. But again... I'm asking you a question. How long have you been there and how old are you? <laughs> Frankly, as somebody who's been here and, um, you know, I don't know, and with my personality and that I speak Thai, I don't particularly like going there and, you know, hey, where you go? Where you come from? Please come inside. Oh, handsome man. I get sick of that shit. <laughs> Why? You know what I mean? Like, if you're if you are really good at dealing with um, if you're really good at dealing with Thai chicks, you should be able to get you should be able to get ones that don't need to get paid. You should be getting them for free. There should be no you don't have to pay them, and they go away. You just get the right ones. You get the ones they just you know they just want a gig or a cock. But, you know, they may not be available all the time. So, I mean, I understand. The thing with bar girls or working girls is that, you know, and even the ones that are working with, with men, like prostitutes who prostitute themselves, they're not always going to be available. Um, some of them might because they're, they really want the money or they just they don't have anything to do. But there are a lot of them that are, you know, they're going to be like, nah, I'm busy right now. I got things to do. Well, that's good. I, I personally get tired of being around, and I got tired of being around um, 
chicks on the game. I mean, you know, it's just... I don't only have to talk to uh, guys who, you know, I want to hang out with. My buddies or whatever. If I'm going to talk to a woman, you know, it. yes, there are bar girls who are intelligent or street smart or whatever. But, like, I just don't want to deal with the bullshit. And I don't have a reason to be in those situations, you know. I don't have a reason to be going out at night to hang out in some go-go bar. Now, if I owned a go-go bar or something like that, that'd be a different story. You know, or I was single. Maybe that would be a different story. If one of my buddies came over here and said, hey, will you take me out and take me to a go-go bar? I'd say, yeah, all right, you know. But most of my buddies, they're already experienced enough where they don't need me to, to go with them. They don't need my help. It always comes back to the women. Some of the most narcissistic, self-absorbed women on the planet are here in L.A. Uh, yeah, I hear that a lot. And, you know, I used to live, I didn't live in L.A., but I lived in Huntington Beach. Uh, I lived all over, you know, su Southern California. Um, you see, the way that you write that, you're wrong. I understand what you're trying to say, but Thailand as a country has far more tourists that don't engage in the sex industry, and that's why they're changing towards the Chinese and to families. Now... What people don't ever talk about is that far more Thai men are involved in the sex industry with Thai women than foreigners. You know, far more. Every little village has a karaoke or a massage parlor somewhere around. I mean, you know. So it's not a fact. It's what you think is a fact. Now, Patia runs on the sex industry. Uh, Patong runs on the, the sex industry. Without the sex industry, you know, those places are dead. And they're trying to change that, but I don't think they're going to ever be able to. I think they're just going to have to do away with it, and there's still going to be chicks who are going to be like, all right, listen, you want to take me? They're freelancers. <sighs> yeah, the Philippines. Angeles City. Places in Manila. Yeah. Cebu. Anyway, it's been a, a lovely morning. Well, yeah, of course, you know, there's a, there's nightlife in Bangkok. Exactly, beyond Trinity. Uh, and even, listen, Singapore is not a poor country, and yet there's prostitution there. Japan is not a poor country. There is prostitution there. As long as men need to get laid, there's going to be prostitution. So guess what? That means it's never going to end. But, you know, the, the difference between a place where the girls are looking at it as, hey, I'm making some serious money... It's going to be worth it to me as opposed to I'm getting by or maybe I, you know, the, the, the upper tier chick can make enough money to put it away and start a business and have lots of money. Um, 
the difference is that the ones who are the poor, okay, Mr. Mitch, thanks again, man. Um, the ones who are poor, a lot of the men, um, they seem to think because they're paying that that means they control them. And I think that's, that's where the problems occur. You know, they just get involved with them real quick. They go, oh yeah, honey, you know, I'm the man with the gold. I want you to live with me and you're going to have to do this and do that. And I, I, I can think of one guy in particular who had, a, he has quite a bit of money. Um, and he wanted his girl to do this and this and this. And sometimes she would just rebel and just be like, no, I don't feel like doing it today. And he'd be like, you need to do it. And she's like, no, I'm not going to. Well, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to beat the shit out of her? Well, that's not going to get you anywhere. I mean, you know, so what are you going to do? I'm going to hold her money back? Well, then she's going to leave. And that's what she did. You know. Later, Mitch. Where are we at here? I think it should be legal. I definitely think it should be legalized. Listen, if they're going to legalize weed, they might as well legalize prostitution. You know, I mean, they legalize it. They make the girls get medical checks. The prices are going to go up. But, you know, who knows? You might have some college girls who are like, hey, you know what? And they do it already, but they're like, hey, I can make even more money now. I'm going to fund my education by, uh, you know, working at this, this place three days a week. Well, pot is already technically legal here uh, for medical use. They're talking about um, allowing ties six plants in their house for personal use, which... You know, but that doesn't mean you can go out and smoke a joint on the street or whatever. It means in your house, which I don't understand how that works. How can you grow six plants and then smoke in your house, but smoking's not allowed in your house? So what does that mean? You're going to have to like make little pot brownies. You can't smoke it or you're going to have to eat it. What, what are you going to do? I don't know exactly the whole breakdown of the law that they're trying to pass. Interesting, though. <sighs> nope. Vaping is illegal. And it's funny because yesterday... Um, what did I do yesterday? I streamed yesterday. Where was I? Oh, I was out um, walking the tracks. When I came into uh, the mall at the end of my stream, and I walked in and I went to Starbucks, got a little water, and I was sitting down. There was a guy there vaping. And I'm thinking, doesn't this guy... Because the, the, the penalties are quite steep. Vaping is illegal. Um, but I was surprised to see the guy, you know... And um, he's just sitting there smoking away, you know. Which I don't know what why Thailand has such a hard on for the vaping, but it's their law. It's illegal, you know. I mean, I'm not gonna rat on the guy. Hey, man, you're you're vaping. <clears throat> no, it was a Thai. It was a Thai guy. And it looked like, um, you know, a device that was not a throwaway device. <sighs> yeah, okay. And how many have died from smoking? See, you know, I don't know. I'd have to look at all the 
scientific data to see, you know, what's what and But, you know, you can't have one without the other. You cannot allow the tobacco industry to keep cigarettes legal and have people... Yeah, I don't see any difference either. Smoking kills. So it's apparently, you know, vaping has killed uh, uh, a few people. So what's the difference? You know... The difference is the tobacco industry doesn't like it. And it doesn't do that to every 20-year-old. Okay, so really, please, tone down the drama, you know. You, I don't know how much that 20-year-old was smoking. That 20-year-old could have been smoking every minute of every day you know i don't know i'd like like i said i'd like to see the scientific data like the unbiased data if there is any but cigarettes they kill it's simple it's a known fact but you know people people uh can't seem to, to stop smoking, so they keep the industry going, and then the industry's making so much money, they don't want it to stop. You know. And exactly, anytime serious money gets involved, you know, serious money is involved, they're going to find a way to delay it, to uh, allow it, they're going to just keep letting it go on. And I, 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 I believe that at some point, marijuana will be legal in Thailand for personal use, but it'll be some, there'll be some caveat, like you can't smoke when you're driving, you can't smoke out in public or whatever. It'll have to be in the privacy of your own home, which contradicts the fact that you can't smoke um, uh, inside of uh, your house. You can't smoke cigarettes. All right. Seven people have been linked to e-cigarettes, uh, to, de to deaths from e-cigarettes. Vaping-related illness Seventh death linked to e-cigarettes. All right, so seven deaths. I don't know how many deaths around the world. But I, I call bullshit, all right? I'm sorry. Yes, it's dangerous, but so is cigarettes. And I'm looking here. Uh, it says uh, nearly 200 cases of mysterious respiratory problems across 22 states whose only known link is the recent use of electric cigarettes or vapes. <laughs> 193 cases. Some were smoking nicotine, others THC, or can uh, cannabinoids. So maybe they shouldn't have allowed it without checking into it first. That's what it sounds like to me. Where is here? What's here? If you're here, don't you know if Westerners are targeted? And targeted for what?
Uh, well, yeah, I was talking to him for, 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 the, for the moment. The FDA. Oh, God. And you, you're saying here. Westerners are targeted here. Here is where. If you're here in Thailand, don't you know if Westerners are targeted for cash? I mean, seriously. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, exactly, beyond Trinity. The key word is yet. And, you know, some people will live their whole life and... Um, uh, and they will never die from anything related to cigarettes, you know, and they drink heavily and they'll never die from booze. But many, many people, millions, um, they, uh, they have problems because of it, you know, that's the truth. Dude, are you a fucking idiot or a troll? I mean, seriously. Get out of here. Are, ties pr are all ties predators? You're a fucking idiot. Now get out of here. No, no, don't, don't worry about the vaping, man. I don't care. I mean, there's nothing wrong with talking about that. It is, to me, it is what it is. See, I don't smoke uh, cigarettes. And, you know, I tried it when I was a kid. I didn't like it. I hated it. Uh, my parents warned me about cigarettes. They don't smoke. Nobody in my family smokes. Nobody here smokes. Um, and if I did smoke, I smoked weed. And I didn't smoke it vaping it. I smoked it, you know, as a joint or in a bong or, you know, and this was long ago. So, you know, to me, uh, smoking, especially cigarettes, is a nasty habit. And this guy, Mike, is a jack-off. Because I'm looking at his site. Um, and he's been to Phuket and a bunch of other places. Let me see something here. And yet, he doesn't know anything about Thailand. Are, are, are they all predators? No, they're not all predators. In fact, 99.9% .9 of them are not predators. Stupid question. Okay. As long as you got the insurance that's going to cover it. And I mean, you know, see, that's, that raises a whole nother issue with the cigarettes. If you know that cigarette consumption leads to... Uh, to cancer or to other problems, and you know it's gonna put you in, uh, in the hospital, and that it's gonna cost a lot of money, whether it's insurance money or your own money. Now, if you were paying for everything, I'd say, you know, hey, but if you gotta pay, say, four or $500,000 over the course of a few years, then that's a different story. Ugh. Ask a stupid question and you get booted. That's just too stupid. Are all Thais predators? Are, are, are all Americans predators? Are all Bangladesh predators are all Europeans, Swedish, Norwegian, uh, Dutch. Are they all predators? What, what do you want me to do? Lump everybody together? I mean, really. I know you don't think about it. That's the, that's the whole, that's one of the points. You don't think about it, but maybe you should. Maybe if you thought about it, you would stop smoking. You know, you're talking about people vaping and how bad it is. Really, you're, you're, 
you're uh, going down the wrong path here, pal. Live day by day. What do you think, Jeff? Hail Bob, what do you think about this and what he's saying? Curious to know. I don't even know how much is a pack of cigarettes now? Six, seven bucks a pack? That's that is an expensive habit, you know. Yes, I do. That's my that's my thought. It's a bit short sighted, isn't it? You're gonna you're gonna Holy shit. Um You're gonna talk smack about vaping, but yet you'll smoke. I mean, you think it's a bit hypocritical? And then you don't even worry about what's going to happen to you. What happens if you got to be put in the hospital and then taxpayers have to pay for you to be in there because you ain't got the money to cover the bill? So, you know. I, if somebody wants to smoke, that's on them. But, you know, what I'm saying is if you, if you really want to get um, analytical about it, why don't you think of the, the end result? and the average end result and how much it would cost you and whether or not it's really worth it. Now, maybe you just can't stop. And I understand it's a, it's a, it's a difficult habit to stop, but maybe you should try. I don't know. It's up to you, man. It's your life. See, this is the whole thing. I'm sitting here. I don't smoke. I don't have to worry about going to get a cigarette, taking a cigarette break. I don't have to worry about any of that shit. And I like it that way. To me, it's bad enough if I have to say to myself, oh, I don't have a coffee in the morning. That's bad enough for me. You know, it's more than enough. $9.50, $12, $14. Well, good for you. I, you know, I don't have to drink coffee. That's the thing. I can drink tea. I can drink uh, water. I can drink whatever I want. I'm not addicted. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to try to stop smoking cigarettes, then, you know, go for it. No, it's not about, guess we all like different things. It's not that simple. That doesn't, that doesn't get you off the hook. You're talking about, you want to, here's the thing. You want to talk about vaping and vaping is bad and, oh, it kills all these people then it, admit to yourself that what you're doing is fucking just as bad, but far worse. And that you're just coming in here riling people up and, you know, and, and trying to start a bunch of shit for no reason about your fucking love for cigarettes. Yeah, I don't want to be around people who are smoking cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like, get away from me. Go smoke where, you know, a little ways so I don't have to get your secondhand smoke and get the fuck away from me. There's enough pollution in the world without me having to sniff that shit and smell it and breathe it in you know what i'm saying so it's not as easy as oh guess we all like different things well i'm sure if i shot myself up with heroin i'd be like damn i like that that's kick ass man we all like different things i might as well just fucking shoot up Boy, you're a genius. Get out of here. You know what? I've had enough of you. You're a dumb shit. You're a chowderhead and you're gone. Goodbye. See you later. I thought it was 35 years. I smoked for 35 years. Oh, now I smoke for 25 years. You're so full of shit. Get the fuck out of here. You've been booted. You're out of here. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can always tell him, man. I knew that guy was a... He's probably the same jackass who is uh, Pat Day One and all these other guys that come on, you know, with this passive-aggressive bullshit. 
Chef Mallon had a good meal this morning. I'm feeling good. You know, none of these guys are going to bother me. I don't care. To me, you're just a dumbass pissing away time. And, you know, you are trying to piss my time away. But you're gone. Yeah, they're entertaining. This one's going to stay up. I'm going to keep this one up. Uh, no, I, I don't buy these water bottles all the time. Um, we have the bigger bottles and we fill them up like down the street. Um, I guess we should get a filter and we just haven't got around to doing it. And the water pressure in this house is, uh, not very good, but we should get a filter, one of those filtering things, or just get somebody to deliver the water. Um, we recycle all our plastics, I will say that. We keep it, we have a bag in the back. We have a garbage bag in the back. We put all the empty plastic of any kind, whether it's uh, uh, cooking oil or whatever, we throw all the plastic bottles in there. And then we get four or five ba uh, bags. And then when the lady comes by, we give her the, the bag. She pays us by weight and we get, usually it's around 100 baht. Well, I worry about that too, but you know, what are you going to do? I can't worry about everything. You know what I mean? Like if I did, I'd be even more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What is the word I'm looking for? More, uh, I don't want to say anal retentive. <laughs> neurotic. I'd be more neurotic than I am already. I mean, you know, I'd be worrying about, like, what are they putting in the food here? Does she spit in my omelet? You know, I, I could worry about all kinds of things. I don't want to live my life that way. I've already, I'm almost, next month I hit 57. You know, if I, if I reach 57, it's, it's longer than I thought I would last. And, you know, I've, especially in the last few years I've lived my life to where I try not to, to worry too much or be fearful of what I do because it's always about risk reward or risk versus the accomplishment or whatever it makes no sense to go into the middle of a battlefield in a pair of uh, you know in a pair of uh, beach shorts and people are shooting all over you and you're just walking along like you're walking down a New York street where there's no crime. It's not the same thing. You know what I mean? You have to think about, hey, well, wait a minute. There's guys shooting everywhere. There's bombs going off. I might die. There's a difference. It's calculated risk. <sighs> yeah, no, no room in life for paranoia. Which is why I don't have a problem. Wasn't he the guy who... Let me see something here. Oh, it's hard for me to see it now, but... Wasn't the guy uh, that I just banned, wasn't he the guy who was talking about MSG? Or was that you, Alexander? I don't remember. Um, you know, it's like... I do the best I can with what I'm eating and you know once in a while if I have something like some fish sauce I'm not going to get too overly concerned about it yeah I mean you know like I'm not going to get overly concerned about it it's not something that uh, I mean I don't eat Thai food all the time I don't eat Thai food on the street all the time um, you know I go out for Japanese once in a while I get just like a pork chop or some chicken once in a while done like Western style. I cook at home. I cook some Thai food once in a while. I cook Western food sometimes. And, you know, I try to, now I'm trying to cook uh, a little more healthy for myself, especially. 
So I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to. If I was vaping with MSG, that'd be a big problem. Uh, it seems to me that the world now is full of a lot of people who are saying, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. I don't want you to do that. This offends me. This is horrific. This is no good. We need to change this. It's all about, you know, the negative. And I'll admit, sometimes I'm not the most positive person. You know, I'm a bit uh, pessimistic. Why did I stop? Because I don't think I need it anymore, to be honest. Because when I went in the hospital and had my gallbladder taken out and when I had my two bile duct surgeries I wasn't allowed to continue it and so then I didn't continue it for a couple of months because I wasn't allowed to and then I was like hey I don't feel any better or worse I feel the same I don't feel like the testosterone is doing that that much for me and considering the price went up, it doubled in the past few years. And, you know, it was uh, 45 bucks every three weeks. That's, 50, that's 60 bucks a month. $720 a year that I was like, do I really need this? I was like, no, I don't. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, it, who knows, you know, I don't know. But I know I don't feel any different aside from I feel older, a little bit older now because I'm doing things that, um, oh God, bad joke, dude, bad joke. Um, you know, I mean, I'm walking long distances on a regular basis. Uh, I've been doing that for, for years, but now I'm starting to feel it more. Now, maybe if I was using, uh, you know, HGH and, and testosterone replacement, uh, maybe I'd feel better. But I don't really want to, I don't want to introduce those substances into my body if I don't really have to. And I think it's natural to age. So, you know, what's the point? It's not like, you know, uh, I, I don't feel that old. I mean, I feel old after I've done some strenuous exercise. Uh, yeah, I still got the sniffing problem, but I'll have to go in one of these days. The problem for me is I don't want to go in and have them go, okay, this is your problem. You're going to need to do surgery and they're not going to cover the surgery. I'm going to have to pay for it anyway. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I'll wait until I got the money to do the surgery. And what's really odd is like yesterday I was walking, didn't have it. I think it has to do with the air conditioning when my nose gets dry. Uh, I think that's what it has to do with for some reason. And the last time when I went in, the doctor just said, oh, you, you've got some uh, inflammation. Well, usually I, if you're sniffing all the time, you're going to have some uh, inflammation. Yeah, well, that's... that's uh, that's part of the plan, you know. There's a lot of moving parts to my life, you know, because it also involves my kids and my wife. So, you know, it's not only about me. And sometimes it's, you know, uh, well, they need money to do this. What's, what's uh, the better option? You know, I can wait a couple of weeks to get new glasses, but... They can't wait to, to get to do something to pay this fee at school or something like that. So it's about priorities. Your priorities change when you have kids, you know, for sure. And that's what I think some people don't understand, you know, is that for me, my life has evolved. It's progressed. And I'm in a place where I, you know, for the most part, I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. I'm not really so bored. Are you asking us to take them out? Take who out? My kids? My wife and kids? Uh, no. Why would I do that? 
but it is, it is, uh, you know, Alex came home yesterday and, uh, he was like, oh, I got this project. I've got to play in front of all the faculty. He's got to play his guitar. He's got to play a couple songs. Um, he's got to go and play a couple songs. He's all excited about it. He's like, what it means is I'm going to have to uh, play guitar every day at school. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Fidelity. Which we don't have that issue. So, you know, it's fine for me. I don't really care. But I can see where it would be an issue for... Now, I don't know. Can, can you go to the back of your house? And as long as you're five meters away from the back of your house and you're smoking, is that considered acceptable? I don't know. You know, if the law doesn't affect me, I'm not really all that concerned about it. Because I'm not going to start smoking cigarettes anytime soon. You know. I've made it this far without smoking cigarettes. I might as well not start now. <laughs> and I'd be very disappointed in my kids if they started smoking. Because they know. They know what it's like. They know how it stinks. They know how, you know, they know about it. I'm watching, my, I'm, I'm streaming from my phone and watching myself on my laptop. I've got the multi-million dollar setup here. I could have used my microphone, which I have, but I didn't use it because I didn't want to uh, burn the wires. We got lizards everywhere here. Anyway. That is a rare commodity to have. I'm not sure at this point what commodity that is, but the, I guess the fact that I like my life. Um, yeah, in the house, there's little lizards. They run around, but, you know, they there's never any flies and there's very few mosquitoes. So, you know, they scare Alex. Alex is, I don't know why he, he hates them. Nicholas doesn't care. I don't care. They don't bother me. But every once in a while, I'll see one poke his head out or whatever, and I'm like, oh, there he is. Another one. By the time this stream is done, it's gonna be it's gonna be time for uh, me to cook a meal for lunch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like rats. I don't particularly like mice either. I don't see the. I feel nothing when I see a python eating a rat or something like that. I don't. Doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> I don't like mice. I don't like mises. I hate mises to pieces. So, but we don't have any rats. I'm sure there are, I have seen a couple rats, you know, up and down the street um, once in a while. But the, the place, and I should do this. I wish I could do it. Uh, maybe I could do it on a weekend where I stream at about five o'clock in the morning from here, maybe four. Stream at like four o'clock in the morning and go to the corner of uh, Happy Land One and Lod Prow Road. Um, and show all the rats on the corner because they're just hundreds of them. A couple hundred. I was driving along in a taxi one, one day on the way to the airport. It was very, very early. And I looked over to my left when we hit that intersection. I looked over to my left and there's all these rats there. And I was like, oh man. So I don't, I don't like that. 
Something about having lizards running around inside of my house, not used to that. You know, it's not like they, like, walk where you are and they're like, hey, you know, I'm not moving. It's always like, you know, they are running underneath some little piece of wood or trying to go out the door or whatever, you know. And since they eat uh, flies and mosquitoes, we have no flies here. Inside the house, we have no flies. We have a few mosquitoes, but they, they tend to keep them in check. And in the past, we had some some uh, Mises but we put out the little trap the little glue traps and that was the end of them it, so at least we don't see them anymore now they're smart enough to hide uh, anyway let's see here uh, Patreon patrons I'll have some stuff going up there um in the next 24 hours or so, some exclusive stuff. Um, for those who are members of my site, the membership continues, but I'm gonna start referring people who um, wanna sign up for memberships uh, to go to Patreon. It makes it a little bit easier for me in the long run, it'll be easier and um, yeah, what else? Like I said, changes. Uh, go to my Instagram. You'll see, if you've been on my Instagram already, you'll see uh, what changes have been made already. Uh, there's far less photos. I'm whittling down my photos. I'm curating my photos um, for various reasons. So, yeah. And actually, I'm going to start putting some photos up in, uh, Patreon, uh, in Patreon. Photos that aren't going to be on Instagram or uh, Facebook or whatever. So, if you're interested. Some people love photography. Some people couldn't care less about it, you know. I personally find it zen-like. It puts me in another place, you know? Um, and I always seem to find good places to shoot here in, in Bangkok. And really, now I've, I've kind of refined finding places uh, and I usually don't have any places where I go, man, that place was just terrible. I don't usually have that anymore. A hundred and twenty eight hundred and twenty eight billion plastic bottles. Man, that is huge. That's so many. I can't even you know, I wonder how many of them they actually, how many of those are actually recycled? Speaking of that, how are you enjoying your Fuji camera? I enjoy it quite a bit. I really like it. Um, it gives me a little more leeway than the other cameras that I've been using. It makes it easier for me to shoot and concentrate on what I'm shooting as opposed to what the settings are and is it going to work? How's it going to turn out? You know. Yeah, do, do you... Uh, no, no, no. The Fuji... Uh, it's the Fuji X-T3, yeah. Um, I'm getting rid of some of my gear. And that's uh, on my list of things to do. Like... In the next day or two, I'm going to start selling off some of my gear because uh, some of it I just don't need. I don't want it. It's too much, and I need to raise money. Um, and, you know, that's the way I can do it. You know, I mean, there's there's a couple cameras that I don't, I just never want to get rid of. But um, there's several of them that I really, I just, I don't ever use them. Um, it's not about needing to do film. 
I don't need to do film. I didn't need to do film. Um, but I like shooting film. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it, but I'm starting to like digital more now with the X-T3. Uh, yeah, it's mirrorless. It's very good. The camera's very good. It takes great video, too. I haven't even begun to show people some of the video. Um, and I just haven't had that much time because every time I want to do something with video with it, I need to think about the stabilization. I need to think about what I'm shooting and how long I'm going to be shooting for. And, you know, I'd like to start doing some, uh, some stock stuff um, with it. Um, and if I'm going to do stock stuff, then I look at it like I got to at least carry a, uh, monopod, preferably a, tr a tripod. And if you're traveling, that's, it's a bit of a pain, you know, even, even to go out. I mean, the other day I was going to shoot, um, I was going to shoot the, get the drone and I was going to shoot, I was going to go up over the Kong Tui slum and I was going to photograph it just straight down. I was going to photograph the slum. But it was raining. And I was like, well, it hasn't really stopped raining for long enough. It was still drizzling. And I was like, I can't take the drone out like this. I'm not going to schlep all the way down there and then try to get shots. And it's going to be wet. And I'm going to have to worry about the drone. And is it going to rain? And then the you know, it's going to ruin the drone. And so I didn't go. But... Um, yeah. But I still do like shooting film. And believe me, if I could get my hands on a, like a Leica, some kind of a, 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 a Leica, uh, an M3 or M6 or something like that. No, I haven't. I haven't done it yet. I haven't because no scratch. It's a couple hundred bucks, you know. Like I said, it's about priorities. Um, so, but, you know, I may take a little, uh, a little flight over Klong Dui just to take the shots and then get on out of Dodge. But the bag, my point before was the bag was so heavy, um, you know, because of the batteries, even if I just carried the drone in like two batteries and the controller, um, it's still heavy, and then I got If then I'm gonna carry a, a still camera with me, uh, do I need anything else with me? You know, it's like I really need somebody with me. So I'd have to have Alex with me, or Lori with me, or uh, if Nicholas would, then I'd have him with me or whatever. But you know, it makes no sense for me to go down there and and uh, shoot with the drone, and then not shoot with a camera. So then it's like, all right, I got two big bags. You're lugging around a bunch of gear. And then if I need the tripod, you know, it's it's that much more. Nobody said it was easy, you know. But soon, soon I will get... Uh, I will get that... Uh, no, she doesn't have to be the Sherpa, but, you know, it's it's nice to have an extra pair of hands. I mean, all she has in her hands, basically, is her camera. And I think she she uh, usually carries a bag with a lens and some batteries uh, over her shoulder or whatever. But um, it's just good to have an extra person so you can go, hey, could you hold this for a minute? Especially when you're trying to do a stuff that... You, you know, takes a couple, I mean, like if I'm streaming and I'm trying to take a photo and I'm trying to fly a drone, it doesn't work. I can only do so many things at once, you know? Which is why I kind of like film. Um, with film, I've always found that if I ever um, shoot film, I just... I just have my camera for the most part, unless it's a backup. But if I say I'm going out shooting film today, uh, I don't know about Jono. I don't know what, what's going on. I mean, uh, 
yeah, I don't mind his bad jokes. I mean, I give him a hard time about it, but I don't mind his bad jokes. Um, I don't know if he want, would want to go out and shoot or not. Uh, he's a pretty big guy. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't know how tall he is. He's, uh, I don't know, 6'4 or something like that. I don't know if he's that tall. Um, so, you know, it's not like he's the nimblest of uh, people. You know, I guess it just depend on where we were and where I got set up. And that's the other thing is I don't really know yet where I would want to fly it over, over Klong Tui. I don't really know yet. I have a couple ideas in my head, but I need to see the place again to see if I have enough room and everything. Yeah, he's a big guy. Uh, but also, I don't know how interested he is in uh, photography right now. He's still getting uh, the hang of... Um, He's still getting the hang of living in, in Bangkok. So, let's see here. Uh, what is this? Where am I at? Lost my tab here. Are you still planning a Bangkok to Patio walk? Am I planning it right now? No, I'm not planning it right now. I don't know yet. Depends on how my body holds up. If my body doesn't hold up, then it's not going to happen. I can walk 15 miles in a day. It's not a problem. It's the next day that's the problem. <laughs> you know. Or doing it for a week. That's the problem. Oh, no, he's not going to pull a Bernard. No, no, no. And I'll, I'll, I'll have you guys know that, you know, the other day when I was bringing up Bernard about how uh, he just doesn't get it. And he, it, I just thought that he was, you know, he was a numbskull. He knew what was necessary. He didn't want to do it, though. And then he blames Thai immigration on it. Well, he came back to me. What he, he had said, when I started saying that, he said, Bye. I said, okay, bye. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sick of his shit. I don't want to hear his bullshit anymore. And I just blocked him. And he emailed me. Oh, I can't believe you blocked me. I went to go take a shit and I come back and I'm banned. Oh, what a journalist you are. I mean, like, listen, the bottom line about Bernard is he's doing what he wants. Good for him. But don't bitch and piss and moan that it's Thai immigrations after him and they're coming after him and, oh my God, they booted me. They don't want me here. No, they don't want you here because you're not abiding by the fucking ro the rules. How stupid are you? I know I don't want to abide by the rules. Okay, well, then you can't stay. So don't blame it on them. Jesus Christ. I mean, how hard is it to understand? He's like, I don't live there. Yes, you do. You do live here. You got a lease on an apartment. Um, this is your home base, and you've come in and out for uh, more than a year and a half, which is, uh, or more than whatever it was, more than six months. I thought he was here for like two years. But, you know, we talked to him about this a long time ago, and he didn't listen. He didn't want to listen. He wasn't, it, what, it, what it turned out to be was he was incapable of meeting, the, of qualifying for the retirement visa. And if he did qualify, then it would have hurt him in his ability to travel. So, you know, none of that matters, though. You see, it doesn't matter to Thai immigration. They're not saying, we're singling you out because you are a bad person and because you are this and you are that. No, they're not singling you out. They have rules and regulations in place so that if you don't meet up to what they want, it's easy for them to go, okay, you're out of here. We don't care. You're gone. You've been here too much, and you don't want to get a new visa. Get a new visa, and you're going to be okay. But, you know, he didn't want to. So, you know, uh, more power to him for, for taking the steps to go and say, fuck it, I'm out of here. But then don't come back and bitch and moan about Thai immigration. It's not like they've got a hard-on for Bernard. Or anybody else for that matter, you know. Anyway, we've, we've, we've talked about him way, way too much. Um, 
you know, this, this was uh, two years ago we talked about this. And he didn't like it then. He doesn't like it now. And, you know, whatever. There's no skin off of my balls. Putting it mildly. Doesn't matter to me. Anyway, that's where we're at. <laughs> uh, another one bites the dust. Another stream in the books. Oh, God. Uh, of my unmanscaped uh, region. Soon to be manscaped. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it, say, 50 years ago? A hundred years ago. Hey, you want to make some money? Let's start selling some manscaping products. All right. I think this stream has run its course. You're dying to hear... The Manscaped review when the package arrives. Well, I'll be honest. I am waiting with bated breath. It apparently just left uh, New York early this morning. So that means it'll be here in Thailand probably um, late tonight. Maybe I'll get it tomorrow. If not, I should get it on Monday. Uh, we'll see. But I am anxiously waiting. Um, you know, I've been looking around for some beard oil, but somebody told me use the coconut oil and it doesn't really work that good. I didn't like it. Um, what's going on with this? Well, there's not very much left, huh? Boy, I've gone through this pretty quick, eh? If anybody knows any good beard oil brands, please let me know. I know there's uh, they're like a dime a dozen. They're all over the place, but no, actually, Lori's going to be in Vietnam. She'll be in Vietnam for a couple of a uh, couple of weeks. She doesn't get here for another two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. And I think that we may do our little. Uh, we may do our. Klong Tui a little bit different, our little uh, journey to Klong Tui. Uh, one time it'll be kind of for fun and streaming, and I'm not going to worry too much about shooting photos, hopefully. And then one time we're just going to go in and we're not going to stream, we're just going to get serious and see what we can find. Has a bread and talks about, has a beard and talks about oiling it, I'll find out what he uses, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of them, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I've never had to think about it. Um, I'm getting ready to shave my head again. I've been meaning to. And I need to trim this and shave down here. I'll do that today. Um, but yeah, some beard oil would be, would be helpful. Useful. Make it a little softer. Let me see something here. Uh, I do like the feeling of a clean shave. I just don't like the way I look now that I'm older. <laughs> I, I think I look better with a beard than without one. I think I look like a turtle without a beard. You know.
My wife likes the clean, the clean shave. She says I look like an old man now. I'm like, well, I got news for you. I am. I am an old man. But she's used to it by now. <laughs> Captain Fawcett times Rick Hall beard nut oil number one in men's health. Wow. Doesn't smell like an old pub carpet. Instead, it's full rich. Let me let me write this down here. Uh, Captain. Oops, Captain Fawcett and beard oil. Okay, here we go. Let's copy that. Put it in my browser. That way I can remember it. Here we go. Oh, I like the the whole idea of beard butter. Yes, here it is right here. Ricky Hall. Every time I hear the name Ricky, as in R-I-C-K-I, I think of Ricky Lake for some reason. What does that say? Except. Booze, what is it? Booze and Bakoy beard oil. Booze and Bachi beard oil. Oh, wow. This dude's got, ta on his hands, he's got face tattooed. He's got hair, though. Oh, here we go. 25 bucks. Wow, I wonder how much you have to use of this stuff. Quality cost, man. Yeah, I know, but, you know, do I really want to look younger? Do I? And, you know, every time, I like, right now, the beard is starting to feel a little bit like a carpet on my face. And that's usually when I shave it. Um, no, I understand. I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, it does usually make a person look younger. It does make me look a little younger. But then when I shave it off and I'm like, oh, it's going to take another couple of months to get it long again. The beard oil might help, though, to check that out. That's the number one stuff, huh? Rick, Captain Fawcett, Ricky Hall's. How does that work? Ricky Hall's, so Captain Fawcett is who sells it. <laughs> Amazon Choice, nine reviews. Nine customer reviews. A bread club? The oil works great, wonderful smell, nice feel, highly recommend it. Poor conditioning, lackluster scent. That was three. Three stars. And all the others are five stars and four stars. Good stuff. Smells and works great. Just took forever to get getting to Alabama. <laughs> Bought this for my adult son who loves it on his beard. It's a little too pricey, though. That was a four. Was that four stars? No. Yeah, that was five. I love the smell and feel sadly you need more than a couple of drops. Bottle doesn't last long, but I liked it so much. Order two more. Hopefully, I can find a retailer who carries a bigger bottle and the matching cologne. Oh, they have cologne also. Wow. I'm going to totally... Get, what am I... I'm turning into a metrosexual here. So growth, growth oil, beard vitamins, shampoo, brush, and combs. I always like the, uh, the butter. What is the butter? That's what I like. Now, Jono, I will say Jono uh, is a uh, uh, shaving connoisseur. He wants the smooth look, the shaved look. He wants that. Um. So he has all kinds of razors and all kinds of stuff. 
um, uh, like aftershave uh, lotion and, you know, he's, he's, he's the guy to contact about that. But he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the beard. No beard for Jono. Okay, so I guess we're that's about it. I wanted to keep it two to two hours. I never can I never stick to uh uh the time frame that I want. Uh I like to keep the streams if I'm sitting around, I like to keep the streams like an hour to an hour and a half. I like to make them just that short. Um and today I thought, okay, well we're at an hour and a half, maybe I'll go to two hours and now I'm uh two hours and 21 minutes which is it's too long if i'm out and about that's a little different you know you do a little bit of a marathon stream but um i think that's like i said the the stream has run its course we've went over a plethora of subjects today i cooked a nice omelet um we talked about why some people get booted out of Thailand or can't stay in Thailand. We've talked about beard oil. We've talked about um, a woman who lives by the side of the railroad tracks. Uh, we've talked about Thai women. We've talked about cigarettes and vaping. Boy, lots, we covered a lot today. Uh, interesting. So... Anyway, thank you for that that other thumbs down. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, no skin off of my back, man. You know? Uh, there's always going to be haters and there's always going to be people who like you. You know? Well, there's always going to be some people that like you. Anyway, uh, thank you again. Appreciate everybody watching and uh, getting involved. Uh, I got t-shirts. I got books. Yeah, we had a live chowder head. Um, all in the description. You got the Patreon patron thing. Uh, pretty soon, basically, I will be selling my prints. Um, I can't keep waiting for um, the gallery to get it in gear here. I have to start pushing my stuff again and start selling prints. That'll be on an American in Bangkok. I'm going to have to take a little time to do that uh, and also on my photo site scottmallon.net and what else I think the next stream will be Sunday or Monday there should be a video going up tomorrow morning and what else I guess that's it thank you everybody appreciate it until next time I'm Scott I'm an American Chef Mallon in the house on the show about nothing. Um, click thumbs up. Share the video. Get involved in one way or the other. Take a little time. Until next time. Choke D. Leo Jerk and Mai. Arrivederci. My wife is learning how to say Spanish. So that would be adios.